Okay, I have got all these plain rectangle tiles that I now want to make into much more attractive tiles. So, um, remember if I change one of these, I change them all, so that works in our favor here. And if it would have been really thoughtful ahead of time, I would have left a copy of this tile component out here, but because I haven't, I get to show you how to move something that's stuck inside a group or component outside of it, which is something good to know. So let's go ahead and double click on the group and the group and the group until I'm down to one tile in the group. Then I'm going to go to um, move with control so I can copy one of those. I'm going to move it out to the side. And now you see this group expands to include um, this copy that's moved outside. So I want this copy outside. I don't want it to be part of the group. So to do that, I can go to edit cut and you see it, it's gone away it's hiding somewhere in our memory then I'm gonna close the groups which I have to close two group groups I'm gonna double click outside until I have no dotted lines left and then I can go edit paste in place and here's a copy of my tile outside of the group that I can now edit okay so now let's work on making this tile look um, like a more attractive tile so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the material onto this face. So this is just a picture of the tile that I took into Photoshop and um, cropped to this right size so it is now 6 inches by 12 inches and then I just painted that on a flat rectangle to get the material into SketchUp. So I'm going to take my paint bucket tool and um, I can sample that and you can see that I actually already have because it's already here. Um, and again, if you are on a Mac, you have to use B for bucket plus command to get your eyedropper up to sample something. Then I'm going to double click on the rectangle to get down to the editing layer. I'm going to hit B for bucket and I'm going to paint the tile on. So unfortunately it came in not um, exactly aligned up with the edge of the tile. So to do that, I'm going to right click on just the surface. So here's the thing, a lot of times uh, if you right click and you're like, texture is not here, so what's going on? And uh, for a long time I thought that was actually just a bug in SketchUp because that's what I read in a book, but um, I have now learned otherwise. So because I have the entire plane and the edges selected, um, it's not going to let me select the texture. So I need to just have the plane selected, not the edges, and then when I right click, texture position option is going to be there. And uh, I'm going to use these um, thumb thumbtacks thumb to move it into place. I'm just going to click on the red one and drag it into one corner. And you'll see that because um, my tile and this tile picture are already exactly the same size that it's snapped to fit. If it wasn't, if this was something like this, I could go ahead. I know that the red one is going to be stationary. It's going to keep that pattern in that corner. And then I can click on um, the second thumbtack and drag it out till I click to the second corner to make the texture fit. And then if I click outside and hit done, I now have that pattern covering up my tile. And I can go ahead and close my paint bigger tool. Okay, and if you haven't um, painted the sides of your tile, you can do that also. Just double click on it again to get down to um, the bottom level. We still have our tile here and our materials, and we'll just go ahead and paint it on the edges. Then we need to work on beveling the edges, and we're going to use that do that using the Follow Me tool. And if you've never used the Follow Me tool, it's an incredibly powerful and just super fun <laughs> and cool tool to use. So to use the Follow Me tool, you create a shape that you want to extrude and tell SketchUp where you want to extrude that shape and it does all the, um, the rest for you, including beveling and um, all the corners, which is a lovely thing. So we're going to make a little arc shape in this corner. Again, I'm down in the edit mode. I can see the texture layer. And I'm going to use the arc tool just to create a little corner bevel on this. So there's three arc tools. Um, there's two just added in 2014, but I'm going to go ahead and use the original two-point arc. So to do that, I'm going to click once on one edge, and then I'm going to look for um, the line to turn magenta, if you can see that, which just means um, 
that I've got the same angle on both sides. I'm going to click a second time. Oops, sorry, I forgot to flick the, click the first time. Then I'll click the second time, and then I'll drag up. And if you've done this correctly, you can see that this and this are now two distinct shapes. It's really easy not to click right on one of these edges, and if you do that, you won't be able to select this, so you know you need to try again. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make the path that I want um, the shape to extrude along. If I select a face, SketchUp assumes that the edges, the lines of that face are the path, so that's easier than clicking on them all the way around. Then I'm going to pick the Follow Me tool, and I'm going to click on this little shape that I wanted to extrude, and great, I've got a beveled edge that goes all the way around my tile. Now, um, that looks great, um, but let's just check one thing. If I go to View Hidden Geometry, let's see how many planes we just actually made. So if you zoom in, you can see uh, all the, pl all the f planes that we added to this um, rectangle that originally just had, what, four, five, six faces. So we added a lot of geometry to this, and if we um, cr copied this tile over, you know, a hundred times in our bathroom, we've suddenly made our model super huge. So I'm going to show you a strategy um, that's going to help you control your model sizes, and we're going to do that by making much less of a curve on our bevel. It's not going to be noticeable at all in the end, but it's really going to cut down on our model size. Okay, I'm going to turn off Hidden Geometry, which again is under View, and I'm going to undo and undo till we're back to our first rectangle. So this time, instead of um, this arc, I'm going to make an arc that has only three sides. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this also. Whoops, except I wasn't in the edit mode, so I erased everything. Let's get down to this level and erase that. So this time when I pick the arc, I'm going to go ahead and show you, first of all, down here that right now it says the default of an arc has 12 sides. I'm just going to say 3, enter, and now I'm going to make an arc with 3 sides instead of 12 sides. I'll do the exact same thing. I'm going to click on an edge, click on, I'm looking for that ta magenta tangent line, click again, and this time when I pull up, you can see what happens is it made an arc with three sides instead of a nice curved arc. So if this was the main feature of our SketchUp model, um, that wouldn't be good. But this is one of a hundred tiles in the background of our model, and it's going to be fine. And I'm going to show you what happens when I pick the, the uh, face, use the Follow Me tool, and follow, get this new arc. And then let's turn on View Hidden Geometry again. So do you see how many far fewer um, planes that this particular tile has? And if you multiply that times the 100 or whatever tiles in our face, you'll see that it's a much more manageable strategy um, for dealing with a larger model. So let's go ahead and close that. And then also, quite magically, if we look over in our shower, you'll see that we now have um, whole bunch of cool tiles instead of rectangles because these were all components so we change this component change that component so one thing though is if you look at us there is a lot of lines even when I turn off the hidden geometry it's looking a little splotchy especially if you try to print that out so let's look at another strategy for dealing with that and we're going to go back to our little component standalone over here and see what we can do so there's a couple different ways to get rid of all these extra lines, and I just want to show them to you both so you have both the tools at your disposal. The first one, if you right-click on this component, there's an option called Soften Smooth Edges. And if you <coughs> slide this you can and look at the lines on um, the tile, you'll see that they start to disappear. And you can choose how many lines you want to be there or not. Sometimes I like to keep these tiny little corner lines, um, but that is one way to um, get rid of extra lines that are just making your model seem a little bunchy. So the other way to soften and smooth edges is to use the eraser tool. 
So I'm going to double click on this because I need to be in edit mode to use the eraser tool. And when I click on the eraser tool, you can see that down here uh, there's a few more things that I can do with it. And one of them is soften smooth. So if I have the eraser tool and I hold on control at the same time and I go over the edges of my model, you can see that it also uh, kind of hides those corners so I still have that edge showing for the shadow line created by the edge showing, but not the lines themselves. So I've got a little more control doing this way. Obviously it takes a little longer to do. So um, there you go, a couple, couple different options. Looks great. And now if I look over inside my shower, you'll see that these tiles all look a lot cleaner and neater but I still get the impression of a little bevel edge, especially if I turn shadows on. But I know you're saying, but wait, you've still boarded over this hole. So that is what we're going to look at in the third part of this series to learn how to effectively crop all these tiles so that they fit around the shower neatly without spending a whole lot of time doing it.